It's Ozzy Safa back in your sim and today I'm going to be showing you my VR settings and how I get a smooth experience. Follow my steps if you want to have the same if you're struggling with your VR setup. I will go through all my settings and tell you what you need for a mid-range gaming PC like mine. You go to your settings icon, general, ignore all your main settings, everything needs to be left alone. I do feel like putting V-Sync and half refresh rate helps when you're in flat screen gaming. But we're going to go to the VR settings now. I'm going to show you my global render quality. I've got it as custom. If you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, leave this as on plus boost or on. Max frame rate, you want to cap the frame rate half of your refresh rate of your headset. My headset is at 80 hertz. I used the Quest 2. So global render quality. I'm just going to leave these two. I'm not going to go through each one. I'm just going to scroll down so you copy all of these. I'm not going to talk over which one's a big hit and all of that. But if you want it to look good, your main thing you want to focus on is your texture resolution and your volumetric clouds. Anything lower than these two, you're going to start noticing a visual quality difference. And anisotropic filtering. Um, that depends on how strong your graphics card is. If you've got a mid-range GPU like mine, just leave it as 4x. Contact shadows leave on medium. Ambient occlusion, you can put that to medium if you've got a stronger graphics card than mine. But for 3078, 8 gigabyte of VRAM, leave it at low. Rain march reflections low. Ray trace shadows, you, you turn that right off, right away. We don't need that in VR, in mid range GPU. Only if you've got like a 1590 or 5080. Apart from that, follow everything the same here. All these airport park variety, put that all on low or off because that's going to eat a lot of your frame rate. I turn all my air traffic off as well. And that makes a massive difference. All of these road traffic off, off, off. This is VR. We don't need to, we don't need to look at the cars. Make sure you put max frame rate. I want to stress again, half of your VR headsets refresh rate. So if you've got a 90 hertz refresh rate, you'll put this at 45. Mine's 80 hertz. So I'm going to leave it at 40. Foveated rendering on, I'm going to leave the foveate rendering scale slider at 50%. Experiment with it, but I, I just find it less annoying at 50. Now, anti-aliasing, you either leave it at TAA and keep the render scaling on 90. I, I first had it on 80 before this update, but Sim Update 4 has really improved the performance, so I managed to put it up to 90. Or you can put it at DLSS, DLA, which will take a lot of performance hit if your graphics card is stronger than mine, or try quality. First, go and see what TAA is like for you, and then we can experiment with DLSS. As, as you can see, the render scale will change when you're losing DLSS because it's going to super sample the resolution itself. We save it back, and then we enjoy the performance. I need to go through you with my virtual desktop settings. So you want to keep all these settings the same. Use VDXR. It will give you the best performance for your OpenXR runtime. If you, even if you have the Steam version, Microsoft Flight Simulator uses the OpenXR runtime, which is VDXR gives you better performance. Now you want to go to Advanced. Make sure this checkbox is ticked. Boost Game Priority. Leave everything how it is. Don't mess with anything else. So right now I'm casting my headset to the PC so I could show you. Right, I'm going to go into, I'm going to open my virtual desktop app. And I'm going to show you what in-app settings I have in my virtual desktop app. So I'm in the settings in my virtual desktop app. First thing I want to do is make sure my desktop bit rate is set to maximum that my Wi-Fi allows. So that's 120 megabits a second. My frame rate, as I said before, is at 80. If your GPU is stronger than mine, you can set it at 90. Now, we go to the streaming tab. This is the most important. Because I've got a 3070, I'm going to choose high. And that's what the appropriate setting for me. If you've got a 4070 Ti or stronger, you choose Ultra or even Monster if it allows you to. I set always enable synchronous space warp. What this does is double your frame rate in VR in the sim and it duplicates that frame, basically doubles your frame rate, it makes it seem smoother, so it's less stuttery, it makes it seem more fluid. Now some people may not prefer that, but I recommend you do if you have a weak GPU like mine, it will make the greatest of difference. 
Don't turn on the Snapdragon super resolution, you don't need that. Video buffering, I set that on. Keep your settings exactly the same, increase the color vibrance, it will add that color pop to it. And I put show performance overlay just so I can show you guys. So I'm in the Quest 2 right now, recording inside the headset. And I'm gonna show you what kind of performance we get with my VR settings. I'm gonna let it load, let it do its thing. And then give it a few seconds to catch up. We'll see if it comes out smoothly. I'm guessing I'm going to get a performance drop because I'm recording inside the headset, but I'll, I'll try. Cleared in the track, smoke on. Yeah, so far so good. I do get a couple of FPS higher on this. But I guess this is enough to showcase you the smoothness and the settings. I hope the recording records at a high frame rate enough to see how smooth it is. I can look where I want in VR. I can see where the next gate is. I can plan ahead. Know my next move. See, we're holding around 79 to 80 frames a second. And it's totally playable. The asynchronous time warp is doubling my frame, so I'm actually, I locked it on 40 frames a second. That's what the sim is powering. And the headset is doubling the frames with the asynchronous time warp, which is what's making it look as smooth as it is now. It's a must have setting. It may take up a bit of clarity as a cost, but the smoothness you get, I mean, I can read everything just fine right now. I'm not really concentrating on doing this race, I'm just showcasing you the smoothness. So, an aerobatic aircraft like this, where the reaction time in that is. And I've, jinxed, well, <laughs> I've jinxed it then, haven't I? <laughs> this is where it makes a difference. Five G's in that turn. And here we are. Let's try another map as well. Another race course. Frame race dropped a bit, but it will come back. No, it's coming back slowly. When I'm not recording, it's bang on 80 frames the whole time. It does feel more smooth when I'm not recording, but just to showcase to you all, it's, it's still a good experience. Look at my smoke that I just made. Oh, oh, oh controlling. Still in there. Still in the race. Still in the race, lads. to showcase. Incorrect rotation. Correct rotation. I jinxed myself then, but I'm right towards the finish. So there's my VR settings and the proof is in the pudding. If you like the video, please like, subscribe. If you have any suggestions or if you have any questions, Put it in the comment section below. If you want more VR content from me, let me know. I will upgrade my GPU in the future and my headset. I'm looking to get the Steam frame as soon as that comes out. So hold out for that video. So see ya.